Hi, welcome back. My name is Erin. Nice to meet you. And today I wanted to talk about poetry. So poetry is something that has always seemed a little unapproachable to me, maybe because of the way that it's been taught in high school or in college, where every poem, you know, is this deep thing that needs to be analyzed and there's very deep meanings that need to be uncovered by picking apart the poem line by line or in some cases word by word and it sometimes it feels like if you don't have enough context to understand the poem you're just lost to begin with and you've lost the war before you even begun. So poetry is something that I've always been very nervous about and honestly a little stressed and a little scared of diving really deeply into. And I don't know if that's because, again, it's the way that it's been taught in school or if it's just like an art form that my brain can't comprehend. You know, it's like abstract art, like some people will never understand it or some people will get it the moment they look at it. Maybe that's what poetry is to me. But either way, I want to figure out what actually is the case. Do I actually just not like poetry and it's not my thing or is it just that I've approached it the wrong way my entire life? Someone's calling me my man. So to research this I've put together a little training or lesson plan I guess you could say for myself for the next couple of months just to dive into the poetry collections that I own right now physically and also some poems by poets that I think I would enjoy because I've already been exposed to them one way or another typically because I've read their novels before and hopefully this exercise will allow me to either overcome my fear of poetry or to just acknowledge and be at peace with the fact that this maybe isn't the type of reading for me. But before I show you what poetry collections I do have right now, I actually have a stack right here to my right, um, I want to talk through how I prepped for this endeavor. Um, I went on YouTube and I did a quick search on how to read poetry and a couple of videos that popped up were this TED Ed video about what makes a poem a poem and then also some poetry for beginners or reading poems for beginners videos created by a couple of YouTubers. So I did go through and I watched these videos and I took, I mean, barely any notes, but just jotted down some things or some points that I wanted to keep in mind moving forward as I dive into different poetry by different authors. Some of my main takeaways from watching those videos were one from the Artisan Geeks video that poetry is supposed to wash over you like a wave and that's something that she says in the video. I think she's quoting Elizabeth Gilbert when she says that. I don't know who that is but um, I really like that sentence and that intention that when you read poetry you're just letting whatever you experience kind of wash over you and you don't have to think too deeply about it. I really like that and I think that that'll be a good way for me to approach poems. Something else that I thought was really useful and interesting is from Zoe B's video. At around six minutes she says that the purpose of poetry is to use interesting language to get people to feel new feelings and think new thoughts. So that's also I think a good thing to keep in mind for me as I move forward just because it's it's like reading isn't it it's like reading novels reading books you're just reading shorter forms of text and the whole purpose of those texts at the end of the day is to get you to feel things and to maybe talk about a common shared experience or to see if you personally resonate with the experience that the author or the poet is trying to describe or portray so I'll link all those videos and other ones that I thought were helpful and useful below if you're interested in checking them out. And I think they provide a good kind of beginner's roadmap to getting started. I just have um, books and collections that I want to kind of check off my physical TBR. So let me quickly show you the poems that I have right here. You can see I have a good stack. Um, and I'll just show you what I have, what I intend to go through in the next couple months. and. That'll be the beginning of my poetry learning journey. So the first collection that I have here is one that I've already started reading and I think I'm like seven or eight poems into it and it is Mary Oliver's Devotions. Um, if I'm not mistaken, this collection right here is a condensed version uh, featuring poems from uh, collections that she published from 1963 all the way up to 2015. So it spans her entire 
I think, entire poetry career. Um, and I think it'll be a good introduction to Mary Oliver as a poet, and also just to see uh, the different things that she decides to write about throughout her entire poetry writing lifetime. In preparation for reading this collection, I have done a very, very quick Google search into Mary Oliver as a poet, like what kinds of things that she likes to write about, the themes that she tackles, and stuff like that. But I'll talk more about that in a Mary Oliver focused reading vlog, I guess, um, whenever I finish this entire thing, which I think will take me a while. At first I was hoping it would take me about a month to get through this, but honestly I think it'll take me a little longer than a month because I really want to spend my time with these poems if I can. Uh, I want to annotate if a certain poem calls out to me and it feels right to do so. So yeah, this will be probably the first in this poetry series that I'll be doing. The second collection of poems I have here is actually, or was, a gift to me by a friend all the way back in 2017. And it's Sylvia Plath's Ariel, and this is really cool because this is the restored edition, and um, from that I'm guessing it just means that there's like the published, traditionally published version, it's all neat, and I think maybe the way that her husband, if I'm not mistaken, has edited her poems and published it, and then there's the second half of the book, which is in this typewritery font. I don't know if you can see that, but um, that seems to have more of Sylvia Plath's own edits, which I think is really cool. So honestly, if I think about reading this, I might just read this from the second half only. I don't know, it just feels a little more personal to me. And I'm able to see Sylvia Plath's thought processes while she's editing her poems. The friend that gifted this to me wrote a little note in the front cover and I totally forgot uh, that he did that. And that makes me really nostalgic. 2017 was like, can I do math? Four years ago, which is wild to think about. Next up, I have here a collection of poetry that I found at a Goodwill bookstore for 99 cents. And it is A Tongue Is Not For Lashing by Penny Palasti, translated by, if I can find it, am I blind? Who is this translated by? Okay, I have no idea who this is translated by. If someone knows, please tell me. I'm so sorry. But um, it's out from Mai Tai River Press. And yeah, I, I have no idea who Penny Palasti is as a poet. Never heard of her. I just saw this in Goodwill and it was only 99 cents. And I honestly flipped it open and I just read the beginning of one of the poems and I really liked it. So I decided to take it home with me. And what's really cool is this book is half in Hungarian and half in English. I don't know if you can see right here. And even though I don't know a single lick of Hungarian, I just thought this would be cool. Um, with the native language that it's meant to be read in on the side. And I have another book later, another collection of poems that you'll see why I really like the native language on the side. Um, but yeah, I had never heard of her before. I never, I can't really find anything about this collection on the internet, to be honest. I did look up Penny Palasi just on Google and she has a YouTube channel with only three subscribers. But I think she reads out a lot of her poems there and I'm, I'm really excited to see if any of the poems in here maybe are in her, her YouTube channel. Because I think listening to poets read out their poems is a very intimate experience, right? And it probably, I imagine it would give readers or listeners a different feeling than if they were just to like listen to it or uh, read it on their own. There's also these notes in the back of the poem kind of describing the objective, I guess, of each poem or any other literary devices that are present in the poem and why maybe the poet has decided to use those literary devices. I'm honestly not sure if Penny Palacio herself included these notes or if this was like an editor's notes type of deal, um, but I'll read the introduction before I dive into this book and kind of figure it out from there. But I think that'll be really helpful too. It's like a very condensed spark notes breakdown of each poem. And then we have The Essential Rumi, and this is translations by Coleman Barks with John Moyne, and I found this at a used bookstore for only $12. I don't know if you can see that. 
twelve fifty. Um, but I don't know. I I know Rumi's famous. I've heard a lot of things about Rumi as a poet on the internet. Um, he was born in the year twelve oh seven. So this collection of poems is from a time period very different from the ones that I have shown just now. But I don't know, I just thought some diversity in poetry would be fun and I have no idea how my experience with this will be. I feel like it'll be very different than a lot of contemporary poetry, uh, but I'm not gonna overthink it. I'm just gonna dive into it. No expectations, head first. Obviously maybe I'll read the introduction or the editor's note in the beginning and go from there. All right, and last but not least, I have The Heart of Chinese Poetry translated or put together by Greg Wincup. And this is something I'm so, so excited to have found, again, at a used bookstore, because I feel like you can't find these types of books in newer bookstores nowadays, unless you're really, really looking for it. And I feel like unless it's a very specialized type of bookstore, but anyways, this means so much to me because uh, I recently been wanting to get into Chinese poetry and I guess more importantly I want to read it in Chinese which my Chinese isn't that great. Uh, I would say it's probably about a second or third grade level of no, that's, that's not even exaggerate. It's probably like a first grade or like a kindergarten level of reading and writing, but my listening and speaking I think is like at least like high school level. Um, so reading poems in the native Chinese format I think will be very difficult for me, which is why I really like this version because it has the English translation and then it also has the original text with very simple definitions of each word, which I know, especially for Chinese poetry, each word can have so many meanings behind it. And I think for poems that I'm more interested in, um, I'll probably go on the internet and see what other, what other people have done or said to analyze these poems. And I think what's nice is this book collects, contains more of the famous Chinese poems throughout history. So I think there'll be a wealth of information on the internet and worst comes to worst I can always do a quick Google search in Chinese and then translate the Chinese pages into English because I think there will probably be more resources breaking down these poems that are in Chinese um, and I can always use that built-in Google Translate function on Chrome to just translate it into a language that I can read and understand. Oh wait, actually last last but not least, I have one more collection here, it's on my e-reader, and it's Ocean of Wong's Night Sky with Exit Wounds. I don't know if you can see that, but I read Ocean of Wong's uh, novel on Earth Were Briefly Gorgeous, I think last year I want to say, which is crazy, or maybe early 2021, but either way, I listened to it as an audiobook and I freaking loved the way that it sounded, the, the way that Ocean Wong narrated his prose in certain parts, you know, because if you read On Earth or Briefly Gorgeous, you know that parts of it is written in prose and poetry. It was so beautiful to listen to, and I've watched a couple of Ocean Wong's poetry readings as well on YouTube, and I just really like the way his voice makes his poems sound, and kind of the very melancholic, very sad qualities to his poetry, so I figured I'd finally pick up his collection of poems and see if I like them. Ideally, I think I would want to find an audiobook to see if I can listen as I read the poems, just because I already know that I love the way that Ocean Wong's voice sounds. So if I can do that, if, if that's available at my library, then I would love, 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 love to do that. So yes, that's the actual last collection of poems that I have or have in mind to read the next couple of months. Okay, so these are the five collections of poetry that I just showed you. I think that it'll take me at least five or six months to get through everything uh, intentionally in a meaningful way. So that's what I'll be doing as like a mini side project for the next half a year, I guess. And as you can maybe see from this, there is a relatively diverse collection that I have here, so I'm hoping with that the intention is to 
is to see if I have a preference for poems from a specific time period. So maybe I'll just resonate with contemporary poetry more than like poems written by Rumi or maybe classical Chinese poetry. Um, that might be the case and if it is the case then I'll have a direction to go in and if it's not the case then that's okay. You know, maybe poetry isn't for everyone and if I realize at the end of this experiment that it's not for me, I'm fine with it. At least I've checked off all the poems on my physical TBR and um, you know, I can say that I've thoroughly explored it as a genre and I can walk away happy saying that it's not for me. But I hope at the end I will end up liking at least some of the poems I read and that this will be a an interesting thing to watch and follow along with. So. So that is it. That's all I have for you today. I hope that you will honestly try this out with me. Maybe not necessarily the same poets, but if you have poems on your shelf that you haven't picked up that you want to, maybe this is your nudge to do so. And um, if not, then I hope it's at least entertaining to watch me struggle through reading some of these. And yeah, that's all for now. Bye.